it's a rich place. So where should we go? Build tropical cars? Well, to me, if we started in Gasmium, which again, I think they want like, they, they still like their budget cars, but like sort of bigger, more powerful family cars. To me, this sort of screams at sort of 19, like late 1940s into 1950s sort of Americana big cars. But the same thing happens with like, if you think of something like Tropical or Cuba, right? You've got the whole thing with, with Cuba is you got those, those 50s and 60s you know, big Chevrolets still going around just because of embargoes and things. I can't really get the new cars in there. Like I'm kind of, I don't know. Do we want to go Archana and make little budget cars? Gasma big building ones. We could go Frunia and make like a small run, little handmade, little sports cars, you know, little two seater, seater little convertible ones that you'd seen like movies that like driving up the Italian coast. And you know, there's got the, the, the one the, the one lady in the sidecar who's got the scarf that just like waving way back as they drive around kind of thing. So there's a lot of things. I mean, there's no region based around Japanese car design. No, no, not an explicit one, but you could, you could, you know, just do whatever over here. I'm kind of leaning between Gasmia and Archana. Crap boxes in Archana. Well, the, the the dev did do a bit of a let's play of that, but it was a while ago, and we could do something like that. If you don't vote Archana, Archana votes you. Comrades, I think we're gonna have to go to Archana. Archana because it's green. Well, oh, you're, it is green as opposed to red. That's true. Now, as Archana, we do have access right away to Deluha if we want to be able to sell like fancy, fancy fast cards. Glory to Archestan Stoka. Yeah, all right, I think we're gonna do this. Guys, I'm gonna make glorious cards celebrate a pleasant. <sighs> Ah, it's so tough. It is tough. Muscle cars are just little crap boxes. Let's do little crap boxes in Archana. Let's do it. So we're gonna do that. Um, you got presets. You can tune all these. This you know company tech. How much extra tech that you're you're gonna gain over sort of the baseline. Um, these uh, over here. This is the size of the plot that you start with to build your factory, the amount of territory you have. And then here's the actual size of the factory. So if you have like a medium factory plot, you can only build medium factories. But if you increase the plot size, then you can go ahead and build bigger factories. Uh, starting cash and how competent your competitors are compared to the baseline. And you'll have a lot of competitors. Like you'll have like 10, 15, maybe 20 different competitors, depending on what category you're in. So uh, having their competition not be at 100% is good. You can go all the way to insane over here where uh, you get a final score. The campaign runs until, I don't know, I wanna say something like 2010, 2015, something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, because the technology really starts to change a little bit after a while. But um, I think maybe we'll just go medium for this first one. It does give us a few advantages. We start with, you know, sort of a little boost in tech in various areas. Um, just a medium sized factory, which is not huge, and a medium sized plot. So we're gonna have to buy more land if we want to embiggen our factories at all. Two billion in cash is pretty healthy, I gotta say that. She totally started insane. I don't think we're gonna do that. 2012 into the world, 2020, we got a couple of different, oh, 2012 into the world, I see. Um, we'll go with medium. We're gonna start in our China. What's our, car, our company name gonna be, you guys? Medium sized factories indeed not huge. Okay, yes, you're right, Belt Knight. That is literally true. Guys, what's what's our thing? Like I was like, oh, we could do something based like can we sort of pun it a little bit based on another car company, like Quill Roll Motors, the Quilby Motor Company or something like that? Or is it like Belgium Motors? Um Quill Wagon? Actually, thank you for reminding me. Um Essential reminded me of that. Uh or it came up with that when I was discussing ideas um recently. It was like Quill Wagon. Motors Inc. Motor Company. Because then it could be QMC, right? QMC as opposed to GMC. Quill Wagon Motors Company. I, th I think I kind of like it. Beneluxo Motors. Oh, that that's pretty good too. Um, well, let's start on medium. We're gonna we're gonna wimp out a little bit, you guys. We're gonna wimp out a little bit. So let's go ahead, before we kick in, we're gonna take a look at the markets and traits. So right now we have Archana selected. If we look at say the demographic size over here, so we can see our potential market. And I know at any given time, I may be blocking some part of the UI. I'll try to maybe move around so that we can see various things. Um, but this is the sort of demographic that we're looking for. Uh, whiskey and chocolate cars, that would have been a good name too. Petra Oleum. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh God, immediate spreadsheet. I know, man. It's like, but yeah, this is gonna, game is like very cool. There's lots of visual stuff going on too, but then there's this. So you can see it's at the big markets. Um, and this is gonna be true in most places, to be honest, to a certain extent. The bigger markets are often going to be the, the budget ones, right? So family budget, commuter budget, family utility budget, utility budget over here. Um, these currently have the biggest demographic size. Although it's interesting to also see that the year on year growth does vary a little bit. So um, while family is smaller currently than family budget, it is 
growing a little bit faster. Family premium is tiny, but growing even faster. So there might be future markets for some of these different things. Um, the muscle car market is tiny, but also potentially growing as well as the premium muscle car over here. So we've got a few things, but it looks like early on, yeah, one of these budget things, uh, what about city budget? City budget, 144, that's not too shabby either. So the bright green ones are the ones that are currently growing the fastest, but it can be misleading because like, yeah, this is growing fast, but it's got a demographic of, of one or, or whatever in here. Um, so we can definitely we're going to look at small. If we can do something that can double up as both, say, maybe a family budget as well as maybe a city budget car, uh, something like that. Go premium, have good offers from the get-go as it grows, maybe. Start with family budget. We'll see. Partially, we're going to start designing stuff and see what happens. Here's our currently market awareness. Everyone's about 6% aware of us in these different areas, um, which isn't very much, but we'll make do with marketing. And then there's budget spread. So this is how much people are willing to spend for these various uh, vehicles. So for example, if we do want to target family budget, um, the average buyer is going to be wanting to spend about 2,600 bucks, um, plus or minus 2,000. These numbers are out of whack for 1946, where we are. Uh, the game doesn't really do um inflation although the prices and the budgets will go up over time as people do expect to pay more for more safety features and whatever um but they're still it's still not inflation adjusted so all right we'll look into that so let's start designing our first car project remember stock up in fuel it's cheap nice um our very first car project over here we're gonna go in and start one new our target market is gonna be our chana over here and um yeah, we can start with our first model. We can name it right away. We, almost 16 months makes me happy. More spreadsheets. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to generate our base model over here. And the first thing we're going to be choosing is sort of our well, like kind of our family here, which is going to set the initial chassis frame. Yeah, so, you know, I don't know that many car words, but what can happen, for example, if we were to choose, say, this, um, this one model could have all these different trims on it. Um, can I not scroll sideways in this view? Oh, you just hit this. So I could choose this line, which is has sort of the 1945 sedan available as a base. And then what I could do is we could design this and then we could make a variant that's a pickup truck, for example. Need to make a lot of. Um, if we do want to make budget though, we might not want to start with the 1945 trim. Um, we could go down here to the 1940s and there's a couple of different options. Um, the, the length over here, so we've got the 1940 here and here. This is 2.1 meter wheelbase. So from front to rear axle versus 2.6 meter. This is a much bigger car. We might want tiny and light. For if we're going budget, that's kind of what I'm thinking. In the year, little car designer of the year, Quill 18, 1940. I don't know too many car words, yeah. I think we're gonna do something like this. We might be able to make a utility version. We might be able to like, make a weird, like a little bit of a delivery van sub variant or something like that, just to extend our market. We'll see, we'll see. Like these, like all the way down here. Oh, we could do like hippie van, man. Dude, dude. And then look at these like little coops, they look pretty sexy. Anyway, let's start with this this uh, thing. So we're gonna have to start with our, I wanna say chassis is what we're working on. Yeah. The QMC it's Beetle, that is nice. It. The Quill Wagon Beetle. Nice game. Needs more spreadsheets. It's going to be good. Don't get me started on hippies. <laughs> so uh, our panel material um, at this era. So with our technology and in this era, it's 1946. Our only options are panel material or whether or, we, or steel. Steel can't be um, um, steel. We will require a steel press. We'll have to upgrade our, our factory to have a steel press to make our panels out of steel, but isn't bad. It's relatively cheap. Comparatively, we could go with aluminium. Aluminium can't be mass produced. It has to be made by hand, which means it takes a lot more work to meet each individual one. If we look at this tool tip, there, this tool tip over there that you guys can see, my view is mirrored. Um, you can see the aluminum, which is on the right, has a bigger bar for production units, and it's red to show that it's worse. This means it takes more units of work, more units of production to make an aluminum frame, uh, chassis as opposed to steel. Steel is gonna be heavier and it's got more tooling costs initially, and we will have to build a steel press, but it's probably okay. Steel is better for your budget cars, yeah. Um, as we make more cars, so each individual car will take less work if we make it out of steel. We'll invest in a press, but then we'll just clang out the blueprints clang clang and that'll be okay um so for the chassis type we can choose currently between uh ladder so it's like a bunch of like individual pieces that have been clanged out by a press and then welded together or we can go space frame 
Ooh, much lighter, but much more work. If we compare the two, again, the ladder production units this much, the space frame production units this much. Space frame's a little lighter, has a little bit more safety because it doesn't crumple the same way. But we're gonna be, we're gonna be cheap. We're gonna have to go ladder. Um, we'll make it out of steel. We're not going galvanized steel. We need an extra plant for that anyway. And our engine placement at this time and with this base sort of fa chassis or family of chassis or whatever, the only option we have for engine placement is front longitudinal, which means it's going to go straight and it's going to drive to a back axis over here. Um, later on, we will get a few more options like mid engine, rear engine. Um, we'll also get the option of a front... Um, transverse engine which is set sideways which is quite good for running a front wheel drive car we're going to do that now suspension suspension at this time again technology will change dramatically we've got the option of double wishbone solid axle coil or solid axle leaf so with the solid axle the axle is one you know combined piece so if we can actually click here and we can see so you can see the axle connects all the way through uh can i get a good angle? Ooh, i went underneath right solid axle all the way through same thing with the leaf and this just this is the leaf suspension versus the coil suspension over here and double wishbone they're actually not directly connected the same way um there is a there is a bar here but that's not the axle i think that's part of like the sway bar or something like that um the double wishbone is much more comfortable suspension Co uh, the leaf is going to be your your weakest one over here but again check the production units i mean the double wishbone is so much better for comfort, sportiness, and drivability. So drivability is just how good it is to actually drive, you know, how comfortable it is to drive, how easy it is to drive, that sort of thing. Double wishbone, so much better. On the other hand, the Leaf production units, so much lower and easier to make. Slightly heavier, but hardly anything to talk about. It is more compact, it's better for off-road and also large, heavy loads. Um, coil is a little bit in between. So if we compare the coil versus the leaf over here, coil being on the left, coil takes a little bit more work, but is generally better in everything other than pure load capacity. I think since we're going cheap, I think we'll go solid axle, maybe coil in the front. We can go leaf in the back, which will actually give us a little bit more carry capacity for slightly heavier loads in the back, which is where, you know, you're going to be filling your trunk. Or if we make a pickup version, we'll go something like that. Shitbox all around says Pablo Rat stuff. Yeah. All right. This thing is going to be uncomfortable. Okay. So this is our, our base chassis that we're going to work on. Um, what are we going to call this? I've had, if, if we're going to play in the sort of like, um, in, in the bigger sort of almost American style market, I was thinking, you know, the, not not premium, but sort of a little bit more middle of the road cars. I was thinking we could call our model over you like the Paradox, and then we'd have the the Europa and the Crusader, and maybe the Imperator. And then when we come and like do a redo, it'll become the Europa Universalis and the Crusader King or something like that. But uh, the Reliant Quill, the Mini Quill, Deathman Car, squeeze into the Crapulator, the Penultimo. We could, we could call our model the Tropico, and this trim can become the Penultimo. The Pacifist, ooh, that's good. And I think I'll call it the, the base model the Tropico, and this will be the Tropico Penultimo. So let's, let's get our trim on over here. Didn't we choose Soviet area? Yeah, but you know, we're still gonna use some of these, you know, other words somewhere else. Um, oh, sorry, I have to make an engine first. Guys, let's make an engine. So we're going for a cheap ass little crap box that is uh, that's also gonna it's it's gonna be small and fairly light, so it doesn't need the world's most powerful engine. Um, I mean, so we're gonna go inline. Notice, so we have again, this is era based. So right now we have inline three, four, or six. So straight six, straight four. Or V. Currently we have V eights and twelves. Uh, in the ninety degree V, we have the eight and the sixteen. V16, that's obviously not what we're going for. Um, V6s are also a possibility, and then there's the boxer engines over here, which are, you know, in a sense, like like the V engines, but set flat. I think, like, we might just try to go with an inline three. I mean, it's not gonna be powerful, but good God, will it be cheap as hell. Inline three. The other thing with these inline ones, um, especially the three, is it tends to rattle quite a bit because of the, um, 
um, the the sort of piston patterns. The, the V6 is a little smoother. Like I think the V4 is less smooth than a three in a sense. The V6 is much smoother because it's sort of, or not, sorry, not V, the inline six is smoother than the inline three because it's two inline threes set together. But I think um, the pattern of how the cylinders move leads to a little bit more uh, sturdiness. And then one of the advantages of the V engines, like a V8 is basically two inline fours set at 90 degrees offset. And then again, because of their, their um, the piston patterns, is piston the right word? The bit that goes up and down inside the cylinder, that's a piston, right? Car words, they're hard. Um, it tends to, to offset things, but yeah, we'll do an inline three. Inline three over here. The only material we have for the block, which is this bit over here, is cast iron. Um, 1.5 liters. Guys, that's gonna be way too big, right? Too expensive, too big. Let's shrink this down. Um, I, I mean, I'm gonna say like, at most a liter. I feel like we should go a little smaller. I mean, we can, yeah, we can go all the way down. Look at this, 300 cc, 0.3 liter engine. I'm not expecting so much educational content. We do, the stuff in here is insane. If we were doing a modern car, the stuff in here will break your brain. It's so good. Um, 998, I think, I don't know. Let's go for like 600. CC, could we do like a 666? Might be hard to like, oh, there we go. Two thirds of a liter, round it up. The 666.7, the devil engine. Um, so we've got two two um, two sliders were, uh, the Satanator, um, two sliders we're messing with. The one on the left, this is the bore. That is how big around the cylinder is, okay? How big of a circle it is. And then the next one is the stroke which is the distance the piston travels from top to bottom over here. Um, and both affect the size of the engine. Um, but then the question is, is your bore gonna be larger than your stroke or vice versa? Or are they both gonna be even? Um, if you have a short stroke engine, if the stroke is less than a bore, this is what's often referred to as an over square, because if they're equal, it's a square engine. If the stroke is shorter, that's an over square, and that tends to, so it's very little distance, so the piston doesn't travel very far up and down per stroke. So it doesn't necessarily generate that much power per stroke, but it can go really fast, and that tends to be for very high RPM engines for relatively light vehicles. So um, super, uh, super bikes, racing cars, that sort of thing. Whereas conversely, if you have a much longer stroke than a bore, that's what's called undersquare, and you tend to, it does, your RPM's gonna be very low, but you can get quite a lot of oomph out of each stroke, so that's good for something that's powerful at low RPMs, high torque. The extreme examples becomes things like tractors and, and, and lorries and things like that. By us, if we go, now this is undersquare here, a fair bit, I guess. Um, it should still be good for a relatively low RPM engine, which I think we're targeting. I know everything I know about cars is either a combination of top gear or trying to read information about how to play this goddamn game because it's so complicated. Okay, next thing we have to choose. So we'll go with something like this. The, the it, 666, the engine of the beast, absolutely. Um, so this'll be, yeah, I don't know. We'll call this like, this is the beast line. It's the beast I3. Um, yeah, and then the variant will figure something out. So we have to figure out the, the heads and valves. So the way that an engine works, right, is you have the cylinder and you have the the um, piston that goes up and down. And, and what is it? Is it suck, push, bang, blow? Is that the, the, the four stroke cycle? I'm not sure, but in any case, it sounds like a great night out. I don't know. Um, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Thank you very much. So as the piston goes down, what it's doing is it's sucking in fresh air and usually some mixture of fuel at the same time, unless you're, you're, you're direct injected. It does that, then what it does is that valve closes, and then the piston comes back up, squeezing the whole mixture together, getting it really, 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 really compressed. And then the spark plug goes off, bang, which then shoves the piston back down and generates the actual power. Um, so here what we're doing is we're choosing how we actually open the valves that let the fresh air and gas in and then let the exhaust out. Um, push rods are cheap and simple, so we're gonna go with it, I think. We also start with some familiarity with it, apparently at 34.7%, which is nice. Um, it's, it's gonna have the lowest engineering time. If we compare these others, uh, direct acting, 
overhead, what's the C for? Is it overhead cam? Direct acting overhead cam actually has lower engineering time. So engineering time is gonna be important for our startup because we're going to be, it's gonna take us several months, in fact, probably a few years to go from design of this car to release. And we'd like to minimize engineering time. That's interesting. Direct overhead cam also supports higher RPM. It's got lower friction. The material cost is slightly more and it does take slightly more production units. I'm tempted. And then there's the overhead cam, which is more complicated and more expensive. And then the dual overhead cam, which is even more so. And I mean, at this point, like, is graphics. It's too bad, like, if this wasn't like um, a cast engine, if this was like an aluminum block or something like that, it'd be all shiny and reflective and everything. So, I mean, we're not doing that. Um, I think we actually go for the direct acting overhead cam. And we have zero familiarity with it, but I think building um, familiarity with this will then lead to familiarity with overhead or maybe dual overhead cam setups. So we'll do that with two valves. Head material is just going to be cast iron. It's the only thing we have. VVL, I can't remember what it stands for, um, but what it does is it changes dynamically. It can dynamically change the stroke um, length going on which is optimized for different RPMs. So for low RPMs, longer strokes, for higher RPMs, shorter strokes. So it can dynamically do that. But I think that's a technology from like the 2000s or something like that. Um, so we're not gonna see any of that right now. Our crankshaft is also gonna be cast iron. We do have the option or the option of going heavy duty cast for the conrods and pistons. Um, they can support high amounts of torque, but their max RPM is super low. And if, again, if we were building a tractor with really low RPMs, it's the way to go. But we'll go cast iron, which is gonna be cheaper, and is going to be more, more suited. Variable valve. Is it just is that with just L? What the 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 L the is it just for like part of valve? And yeah, I know. Oops, I skipped to the wrong place. Um. Do I not have access to the VVL anymore? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's the contextual thing. It just says variable valves. So I assumed it wasn't telling it, but I guess maybe it's just variable yeah, valves and the L's just in there because they didn't want to call it VV. Maybe, I don't know. Pablo Rasta, hey, here's some child support for my Twitch baby. Hitting a stream, finally passed my commercial driver's license test yesterday. Class A all the way, well, congratulations. Driving the big vehicles. Oh, and it's Snoopy the Red Baron, oh. I sold my house to chocolate and whiskey must be had to celebrate. Also, suck blow bang, how you doing? Eyebrows waggle. <laughs> Snoopy, thank you very much for coming by, man. Cheers. And congratulations on selling your house. Hopefully you have another house to move into. Usually that's the way it goes, but anyway. Um, Turge as well! Was Ted linked to the show? Does this game have a career mode? We are actually in the career mode here. It's a light campaign. So light career um, is what we're going through here. Um, they've got big plans for career modes down the way, but it's one of these games that's gonna be in development for like years still. Um, okay, so we're gonna have that. Uh, next up, compression. So this compression is the difference of how much space the is in the cylinder when the um, piston is at the bottom end versus when it's pushing all the way up and compressing the air. Um, high compressions give you more power. Problem here is our technology is really not gonna allow very good compression. 9.6, oh, that's too high. 8.5, way too high. 8 to 1? No, we can't do that either. 7.5? You're dreaming. 7.2.1? Probably somewhere in there will be okay. I'll set it at 7.2. I suspect we'll get some knocking. Um, and what, what that means is basically, if, if um, because of various technologies and the way the fuel and air mixes together and various things, as it compresses and pressure goes up, temperature goes up and it can cause little pockets of, of gas and air, fuel and air, to ignite a little too early, which is called the knock. It's a little explosion, basically. And what happens, if that's happening while the, um, while the piston's still supposed to go up, this these little explosions will cause a little expansion in pressure, so the piston really can't go up as much. You lose tons of RPM and power, but worst case scenario, it can shove it down, it can cause expansions in the cylinder and cause your engines to just like explode and fall apart, all kinds of things. So we go 6.6. Can we do that? Use leaded gas. Of course we're gonna use leaded gas. Yeah, so we can do 6.6 .6 to one. We may have to. Tell you what, we'll set it to seven. We'll see what kind of thing we can do here. Um, 6.66, .66, Jay Rufu, thank you very much. We're getting into the theme real strong. Cam profile. Okay, let's talk about what a cam is. So 
on the, um, actually it's part of the valves over here. So as things are spinning, right, and the valves are opening and closing to let air in and then exhaust out, those can be open for longer or short amounts of time. And the cam profile basically determines how long these things are open at any given time. Um, and if they're open longer, you let more air in and you let the exhaust out easier and you can get more power. Um, but what can often happen is, and there's these handy little tool tips here, right? If you go really, really, um, really open um, with things like you, you lose a lot of fuel economy because you'll literally just let some of your air, your gas mixture out for too long. We, since we're doing a low RPM engine, we want a low cam profile. You can see here, we only need the valves to be open just very short periods of time to let enough in and it's gonna be okay here. You get a smoother engine, lower emissions. We don't care about emissions, hell, we're gonna be using a lead fuel, so it's it's moot, and more fuel efficiency, which is gonna be important for the budget crowd. So I'll bring it down to like, I don't know, a 30, and we'll see where we go from there. Um, if we had VVL, which are the two, uh, which is the possibility for two different cam profiles, basically, we'd be able to set a second one over here, and that would be the, I think, the high end and the low range for, range for things. A VVT is variable valve timing, which lets you choose to, um, alter how long the valves are open based on RPM and different things like that. That's a technology that will come decades from now. Um, you can invest, if we wanted to, we could invest more quality over here. It would make our engine more powerful, more potent, avoid certain problems, but it would make things more expensive. I'm gonna leave it at a base zero quality. We do have the plus two because we started off with a technological edge over here. So we've got a plus two built in without me having to do this. It used to be you'd always put in plus two to sort of spend it, but I think it's always built in. So you can just leave it at zero now. So this is additional quality. So we'll just leave it at zero. We could bring it down to save money. Uh, all right, next we've got our aspiration screen here. Turbos don't come into play until I think the mid seventies in this game. So we don't have access to turbos, uh, but this basically just determines how does the air get into the engine? Cause you need air and fuel to mix to make a kaboom. Um, what turbos do is they just shove air in more aggressively so that for every sort of breath the engine is taking, it's getting more air, therefore you can put more fuel into the same thing. Um, you can't run very high compression there because the, everything's coming in already pre-compressed, so you run lower compression uh, when you got a turbo. But anyway, it's moot because we're just gonna be doing naturally aspirated stuff. We're gonna be using a carburetor. We don't have access to direct fuel injection at this point. Um, although direct fuel injection is a good way to uh, reduce engine knocking because with fuel injection, what happens is as the, as the piston's going up, there's no fuel in there yet until the right moment, until you need the fuel, then it injects it into the side. So it can't sort of pre-ignite the same way. Um, but that's moot, because all we can do is a carburetor. Um, single barrel, single carburetor standard intake is probably fine. Um, I mean, certainly we're not gonna change the intakes. What these different intakes are, is they are set to bring in different amounts of air. And you can see the race intake here. You notice what the race intake doesn't have? Yeah, it doesn't have a filter. Cause it wants to be able to gulp air in as much as possible. Which means that, you know, after you drive a car with a race intake, um, you're sort of gonna have to strip the engine down to get all the dirt out of it. Uh, which is fine if all you care about is one race, but isn't gonna be a good pick for us. Anyway, standard intake. We actually might consider the single barrel Eco um, which what it is, uh, it, it prevents, it, it doesn't allow as much air to come through. And if we compare the two, so the regular single barrels on the right, single, the regular single barrel allows a lot more power, um, but it is also heavier and requires more material. Like the, the regular thing is, is just more, but allows so much more air in. The Eco one is much, much more fuel efficient. It's also better for emissions. We don't care about emissions. Um, but I think the Eco might be enough the Eco only supports up to 25 horsepower, and I think that's gonna be okay though. And it'll lead to a cheaper, it's slightly cheaper to build because it's actually a little less material, um, and also cheaper to run because less fuel involved. Fuel type, yeah, so, you know, you could go regular leaded over here. We could, uh, we could see, we could support really low quality fuel. Um, lower quality fuel with the, the lower octane ratings, which is what's going on over here, are much more prone to knocking, um, and don't tend to deliver as much power at the same time. But what the advantage of this is lets people use really cheap fuel for their car. I think what we'll do is we'll go fairly lean 
So lean uh, fuel mixture uses, so if this is the ratio of air to fuel. So with the 15, we're using 15 times more air to fuel. So very little fuel, um, but it's gonna better fuel economy and lower emissions as well. Whereas you, if you dump more and more fuel, per air, then there's possibility for more of it to fire up. Although if you go too rich, then you end up with a, like this overly wet mixture that just doesn't actually detonate properly. Still, I think we can probably go full lean. Then there's the ignition timing. So I know there's a lot of technical information over here. Um, that, that cycle where the, when the piston is going up and then you set off the spark plug to cause the explosion to force the piston back down, it takes a second. When the spark plug goes off, it takes a while. Well, it's a microscopic amount of time, but still there's technically some time between that spark going off and the flame expanding fully um, to, call, to create max pressure. And what you wanna do is you wanna time it so that the maximum pressure is just after the valve, or the valve, the piston reaches the, what is it, top dead center or whatever, and just ready to start coming down. So it's got maximum force pushing it down. Um, if you've got a very fast RPM engine, you're gonna have to go and set off the spark sooner and sooner and sooner to be able to, to get the flame to expand quickly enough for this very fast cycle. We're very low cycle, so we can go quite a bit lower. Um, and it actually has a lower octane requirement, which is gonna be important because we have shit fuel. So our fuel, yeah, anyway, it's gonna be fine. We'll bring it down here, we'll see. It, so this affects basically at what RPM, what engine RPM you hit peak power. And we're gonna be a very low RPM engine. So it wouldn't make sense to have some sort of timing where like the sweet spot's at like 5,500 RPM. Our engine's not even able to support that. So we wanna bring it way down. Um, maybe like, yeah, 2,500 RPM. We'll see, 42, I can appreciate that, Rogue. Uh, RPM limit, so this is just where we put the limit on how how much RPM the engine's allowed to go to. I mean, literally, it won't be able to reach very high RPMs or it'll try, but it'll get valve float and it just won't work at all. Um, and also because of your material, you might have a point where like bits of it just start would break at that speed. So in practice, it's not gonna be able to go that. In practice, um, I'll set it to like 5,500. Senkovex, hey! Being not a car person at all, this still looks cool. Have, I have a character in one of my stories who is car obsessed. Might be worth it to uh, get in and be able to be able to write her and her alternate timeline car more accurately. Thanks for showing this off, cool. Cycle like, this is weird. Again, I wasn't a car person before, but yeah, it is like that. Oh, six, six, six. That would be funny. We could set it as limit. There's no way this engine's gonna be able to go that fast. I'll set it here now and we'll see what it starts to say. But yeah, this is a good way to learn about cars. Um, okay, so now we've got to choose our exhaust system. The simplest thing is this cast log over here which is this thing. So it's just like one pipe over here and then some side pipes. Because the air sort of got turned corners and things like that, it limits how quickly the exhaust can come out of the engine, which can restrict power. We are not gonna have a lot of power out here. There's not gonna be that much air that needs to leave the engine. I suspect that's gonna be fine. But you can see there's like full model for a cast log, or short cast rather, tubular, long tubular, race tubular. There's like, and it's like, it's these mathematical curves that are set up to try to allow as much exhaust as possible to leave the engine, which is little restriction as possible. I suspect the cast log is gonna be fine. It's also, if we compare it to a short cast, um, the short cast is, does allow more power, twice as much potentially, but it weighs more, more material costs, more engineering time. I don't think we're gonna need it. Um, right now, the exhaust size that we've got actually allows up to 192 horsepower. We're gonna bring it down, 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 30 horsepower. We'll see what that looks like. For a muffler, you can have up to two. The first one isn't as important. That one's the none. The second one is the one that actually has an impact. We'll throw a muffler on there, a baffled muffler. And as soon as you do, it's got enough information to actually run the engine. You see the muffler way over there. We could put a second one in here, but no, we'll do that. More mufflers, better emissions, a little quieter. We'll put a muffler on there so we don't rattle too crazily. And then we're gonna start to see some, some uh, complaints here. Um, right now we have massive amounts of knocking. So our because of um, so many things about our car setup, uh, we can't really run this engine. Part of the problem right now, our octane requirements are 91 and our fuel, we're trying to go on an 80. If we switch to regular leaded, right away, actually our knocking problems go away. Right away our knocking problems go away because this is a good enough fuel to do this. Can we, yeah, if we run the fuel richer, actually, if we bring down the timing as well, we have to bring our Ron all the way down. Is it? 
peak power. Yeah, it's really low. Um, is there another thing you can do to, to affect the octane? I'm trying to remember. Does a cam profile? Lower octane if we run higher. Cam profile. It doesn't seem it doesn't seem likely. Compression? Much lower octane. If we go as low as possible for compression. Oh, oh we're almost there. We're at an 80. We're at an 80, you guys. Yeah. Bring the compression way down here. Um I don't want the cam profile to be like this. This sounds ridiculous. Um we'll run it a little richer. We're almost there, yes. And bring back the ignition timing some more. There you go, 80. We might still get a bit of notice, yeah, for knocking. Oh, 18. Uh, we'll leave it at 18. Here, we'll rich make things a little richer. There we go. Uh, fuel efficiency value is super low. But we do have like, yeah, it is, it is too rich maybe. 11 horsepower, nine horsepowers. We maybe should just like go for better fuel. This is really bad. Oh yeah, we gotta bring down the RPM limiter too. So it develops maximum horsepower at 5,100 RPM, uh, maximum torque at 2,900. That was ludicrous. Yeah, see, if we lean this out, we get more power. We start to get some knocking though. This is such a bad engine, I love it. Exactly what we're trying to do here. Twenty horsepower, baby. Still complaining a little bit about knocking. Engine's running too rich. Yeah. What else did it say? Just like reduce the fuel mixture. Yeah. Here, we'll bring this like there. We'll bring the ignition time. Oh, peak power negative. Except it works though. How do we have our peak power like below in negative RPM? I don't really understand it. Yeah. Um, maybe we can go higher RPM. Like, all of a sudden, it's because of our cam profile. Here I was designing a low RPM engine, and now I'm not sure. Hey, Frank the Troll, hey! We're gonna follow here from France. Oh, merci. Uh, as an F1 powertrain engineer, what? I can confirm you're doing a great job explaining internal eng combustion engine. Awesome game, I like you keep up the great job. That F1 powertrain engineer? <laughs> That's sweet. That's awesome. That's amazing. Uh, this thing is gonna rattle and shake like crazy. Oh, reliability is basically non-existent. Guys, I think it'll just be better if we go to regular leaded. Yeah, we're just gonna go to regular leaded. This is, this is just too dumb. It's too dumb. I can't do it. I don't think it makes sense. Maybe if the engine were different, we could do it. See, we can up the compression. There we go, we're starting to hit some knocking. Well, let's bring the val the cam profile way down. And then the valve float we can do by dropping the RPM. There you go, see, we're still ending up with similar horsepower here, but we're gonna get, it's much more reliable. We were sitting around like a 35 reliability, now we're up to a 40, big difference. And we're still sitting, at, it's about the same horsepower value, which ain't much. Ditch the Eco Carp, um, it is limiting us up to what, 25 horsepower. If we can get one more horsepower by doing that right now, I think it's fine. Oh, well, let's check the exhaust um, setup over here. Um, because, okay, yeah, it's not gonna change much. Too big of an exhaust, actually, there's this like sweet spot, and maybe the powertrain engineer can explain. There's a sweet spot where if your exhaust is choking the engine just a bit. You're getting a little bit of back pressure. You see here, like right now we're at 21 horsepower. If I go and shrink the exhaust just enough, I can squeeze out one extra horsepower. But then if I keep shrinking, we'll hit a point. Actually, I can't make the exhaust any smaller than this. And actually we got a little bit more torque. Um, you'll hit a point where um, 
uh, if you keep shrinking, you'll, you'll run at lower on horsepower. We do have, okay, our intake, 0.99, slight airflow restriction. If we did switch out of an eco carb, we would get slightly more airflow, but it's hardly worth talking about. Hardly worth talking about. Intake the headers. I think we have an engine here, guys. Um, what's the, uh, what's our top end? No, sorry, not this. Uh, direct acting overhead cam. 22 horsepower, the Beast i3. Just sell red cars to increase the speed on them. I put a massive turbo on it. Unfortunately, turbos are not available at this time. Guys, you want to listen to how the engine sounds? Let me, uh, I'm gonna crank the game volume here. Sounds like a lawnmower. That's it. It sounds like we've built a lawnmower engine. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my 87 Nissan. Runs like one too, yeah baby. All right, 22 horsepower should be enough for anyone. All right, let's trim. So we're gonna start with, um, are there two copies of the same sedan? It looks exactly the same. Oh no, there's a coupe, a four door, to, and there's the coupe. So let's do the coupe. I'm expecting it's probably a little lighter. We can still put some seats in the back. Right? That's fine. So you got this bad boy. And here's the thing. You can go and like completely change the look of the car in a bunch of different ways. Change this. Square. Yeah, I think it should be like stupid and square at the top. <laughs> Long boot? No, short boot. Short there too. Stupid and square at the top. I mean, it looks really dumb. I don't know. Rounder this way. Change the door seam. Make the door a little bit longer and easier for people to get into. We can change the flare on the wheel arches. Um, I think it should all be like super narrow. Right? Super narrow, super small. We want dumb, make it square. <laughs> Literally, make it a box. All right. There you go. It's the dumb box. It'd be nice if I could shape the trunk slightly differently. Different model cars have vastly different ability to be like tweaked and tuned. There you go. A little more. It looks like a dune buggy now. Make it lower, people want want smaller back then. Um, I don't think I can lower it here. There, there are some other things we can do. The engine is underpowered for this car's weight. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna get that notice no matter what. It's fine. That's actually fairly common early on to see that kind of thing. Um, and then yeah, we've got all of our paint for different slots. We've got different trim slots that we can work on our paint uh, and do different things. I mean, the red ones do go faster, but on the other hand, um, New paint applies to the car. Saved. On the other hand, you know. Ooh. Ooh. I want to see a red door and paint it black. Like, nah, that's like, ooh. Ooh. Only brown, bland browns and beiges, please. Oh my god. Let's make it brown. I mean, this is this is whiskey. That's that's you know you can't just call it brown. That wouldn't that wouldn't do at all. Oh yeah, and you can add like a little flake in here. So you got like little gold flakes in. Look at how sexy this looks. You know, medium none. Oh yeah, let's put some flake in here, guys. Poop mobile. Is it? Someone says, uh, looks like a log, <laughs> not the forest one. Oh, um, brown flake. Now it looks like chocolate. Yeah, here, we'll call it, we'll tr just call this color chocolate. Bam. All right, finish that into the paint. So we've got that. And yeah, we can we can break this up as well. Like, we can make the bond a different color. The, yeah, f this is the full body slot. But yeah, we can, we can break it down and do different things. It's amazing. It's amazing, the, the, the stuff we like. But I, I like this for now. And then you've got this part where it's like, Guys, um, what what version of headlight do you want? And not only that, like if we mouse over here, so you get this shape, and you click into this, it's like, ah, oh, you want this headlight shape, sure. But then exactly how do you want the lighting set up to be? 
Ooh. Ooh. Now, it's important to note that these are purely cosmetics. They have no impact on the simulation of the game. But it's like, it feels like something sort of squarish here. Or maybe, like, just plain round? Oh, um, whoops. Oh, yeah, and you can put these anywhere, right? Like, there we go. One headlight in the middle of the front bonnet. And I like it, like, adjusts the model. Look at that. It's the Cyclops. We'll save money. It needs a face. The easiest way to do a face is when you start uh, putting a front grill on here. You can get them, like, all smiley. Like, there you go. Look at the, ha the happy one-eyed car. Oh, yeah, and you can do, like, here, do you want it wider, slimmer, embiggened in every way? Do you want to twist it sideways? That doesn't make any sense, but sure you can. And then you get even finer controls over here as well if you want. A little crooked smile on there. Is this a new spore? I mean, seriously. You're not, you know, it's not crazy. 22 HP little Cyclops. Here, we'll, we'll, get, we'll give it a little, a little slant. That's not the design. That's just our cheap fabrication that we're going to have. Excellent. Spore for petrol head. Yes! Um, you know, if vents for the side. We don't need much cooling, but you could. Throw a little something on there. Um, oh, f scoops for the bonnet, right? Oh! There you go, a couple over there. I think some of these are symmetrical. There we go. Something like that. A big old scoop for, you know, for our supercharger. I don't think superchargers in the game. I think only turbochargers, but I'm not sure. Um, front lip, you know, for that airflow. Uh, do, do we need like some sort of ridiculous spoiler or even better, like a whole wing? Which makes no sense. There's no airflow that reaches back there at all. Anyway, this is gonna, this is supposed to be a cheap budget car. It's so cheap, it only has one headlight. One headlight. Um, let's throw another plate on the back. Okay, that makes more sense. There you go. Little number plate on the back, the screwed up little thing here. Let's at least throw in some door handles. Um, these. There, done. It's been styled to perfection. Three wheels have been cheaper, yeah. Unfortunately, we can't make one of those. <laughs> Notice it's got no rear lights, no turn signals. It's perfect. Done. It's done. S side mirrors? No, too much. Exactly. Side mirrors would be insane. Uh, so we're going to go with rear wheel drive. Um, manual gearbox. We don't have access to automatics at this time. Uh, you know what? It's only going to need two gears, you guys. <laughs> it only needs two gears. It can't. This has made top speed. Ignore it. It's going to get updated once we finish everything else. It's only going to have two gears. And we'll figure out the tops. Like this is the top speed for gearing. It's not actually uh, like uh, it's not a speed limiter. That, that's something that'll unlock later on. I think with more of electronic gearbox. We'll we'll come back to the spacing. Uh, just a regular open diff is going to be fine. It's not going to be like an off roader. Two gears, forward and reverse. No, reverse is an optional extra. Uh, we're going to give it like hard long life tires. We're going for durability over here. Um, yeah, it's slightly slightly cheaper as well than a compound tire, but yeah, hard long life. Um, tires currently their width, I think this is in millimeters. Currently 135. We'll leave it there. Um, it feels like these tires are too puffy. I kind of want to make a bigger rim. There we go. Something like that. Hard and sturdy. Steel rim material. We don't have access to magnesium or fiberglass. Just regular brakes over here. These are not very good brakes in any way whatsoever. Um, I suspect it'll need bigger brakes, especially in the rear. Let's at least make the brakes match for now, and, and we'll see where it goes from there. We'll mess with the pad type and brake bias once we get some actual uh, metrics in the car. Um, it's not going to have any kind of under, under tray. We have no downforce, no active aero, you know, no front wings or rear wings. Uh, cooling airflow, if you leave it at 50, this by default is enough cooling for the vehicle. In earlier versions of this, you'd actually have to put like various like grills and things like that to actually do the airflow. Here it's like they've decoupled the, the visual 
aspect of the, the vehicle from the actual simulation thing. So I could bring this up to add more cooling than we need to, which does give us a slight boost in reliability, um, but does add a little bit more drag. Or we could cut back on this to cut back on drag, but then there could be reliability problems with the engine. Um, and then you can also, if you have extra cooling, you can divert more of it to the brakes if you do suffer from engine or from brake fade. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up the cooling airflow a little bit. So we'll get an extra little boost in reliability who cares about drag? It's not gonna go fast enough for drag to matter. Uh, seats over here, I do like this. So we could go with um, we could go with no seats in the back. Uh, there's a sort of like mini bench over here, which is like, I guess, three seats for small people. We'll go with a full bench in the back. In fact, I'm wondering about a full bench in the front. I'm not sure this engine could actually push six people around. I'm not sure it's gonna be able to push the car around. Oh, my car, my head's in the way. Beep. I'm not sure it's gonna be able to push this away, but or the car by itself. But we'll go basic interior, no entertainment features whatsoever. No, no radio, six people in there. Could you imagine? Could you, they had a few small. Uh, we will give basic safety standards, i.e. it has a seat belt and that's the extent of it. Um, there's one more screen we can do here before we work with these stats, um, and that is the suspension setup. So we just have standard springs, twin tube dampers, passive sway bar, nothing fancy. We'll set the presets to comfort mode to start off with, um, and I think that'll be that'll be okay. So uh, what kind of what kind of specs are we? Okay, we've got a huge score for city budget over here, although it's not affordable. Oh my god! This car's best rating currently is as a city budget car. Competitiveness is huge, but only 7% of people can actually afford it. Um, this has got the wrong body type. I'm wondering if they would actually prefer a four-door sedan. That might be what's going on here. Family utility. Why is it not affordable? Guys, our car's too expensive too many seats um out of curiosity what are our uh what are our specs over here okay our top speed is 95 kilometers an hour so our zero to 100 kilometer time or zero to 60 time is infinite we literally cannot we have no zero to 60 time because we can't get there let's let's go back and do a few modifications along the way uh, first of all, since our top speed isn't that high, we can bring our gearing down. We'll still um, overdrive it a little bit here. Um, there's like no wheel spin whatsoever. So we can go for longer gearing here, which is gonna improve our rank ratings a little bit. Within, yeah, within a limit. But yeah, there's no wheel spin because we have no, we, we have no guts. Um, utility budget, why is our car not affordable? How could, I guess we could lower some of the quality meters? We can make the tires smaller as well. Make the car lighter and cheaper. It's funny how the numbers are sort of changing a little bit. Um, this drivability is not great. We can probably mess with it mostly with, um, there you go, skinny little tires. That's all we're looking for here. Still is expensive. Well, unfortunately, we don't have the option of making it out of wood. It's whiskey and chocolate. I don't think the paint has any effect on the thing. Without windscreen and wipers, it will not go. Oh, Biowolfless, you're right. Car's literally death on wheels, and you're telling people can't afford it. Yeah, this, um, so it has a tendency to oversteer. It has a big tendency to oversteer here, which means when you're coming around the corner, the butt end likes to come out. Uh, which really isn't ideal. I suppose we'll, I'm gonna increase, oh, there we go. If I bring the tire diameter up a little bit, I can give it slightly wider rear t uh, tires. That helps a little bit. It's a drift feature, yeah, it's a drift car. 22 horsepower drift car, baby. I mean, mostly it'll eventually understeer. When it gets to about 60, if it tries to make that corner, it'll start over understeering. So yeah, the drivability is really bad. But it's the affordability I'm concerned with. Guys, I don't know how to make this car cheaper. Um, oh, the brakes are too powerful. The rear brakes are like actually way, way more powerful than they need to be. 
There you go. Tiny little rear brakes. Uh, weirdly enough, the front brakes aren't truly keeping up with grip, although that's fine. Lower all quality meters? I mean, maybe. Yeah, you can see the score. I reduced the quality here, and the score actually went up for a city budget. And more, and more, and more, and more. It's becoming more competitive with every click. Oh, yeah, that was the problem, you guys. Too much quality. Let's bring it way down. You're absolutely right. I mean, I don't think I'll go back and mess with the engine. Oh, shit. Let's bring this all the way down. If I scooch it up now... Oh, there, there's a sweet spot. There's a sweet spot, depending on various performances. If I bring this down... Oh, yeah. Oh, that's going up a lot. Yeah, we, we cheap-ass tires? Oh, yes. Oh, now it's going down a little bit. So I'm trying to make this as competitive as possible. So as we bring down the, the, the quality, what we're probably going to see is the desirability maybe drop. So 874 desirability. If I drop it here, that's still 874. 873. See, if the car is less desirable, but it's more competitive. Wait, I can't put... Oh, there we go. Which is the number we're trying to ri raise up. People know it's a shit car. But it's cheap. Oh, that's as low as it'll go. Interior, all the way down. 380, yeah. Safety, all the way down. Oops. Huh? That's interesting. Oh, there we go. No, we'll leave it there. Apparently, we can't cheap out on safety. Oh, ride height. I bet you we can just it's jack this up a lot. Chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bigger the ride height, the less likely it is to bottom out. We are going to get more turn angle. Cool, man! It's so cheap, it slips on bananas. Also, do I hear lawsuit? Ah, you can remove the doors. Oh, that's true. So, um, it's going to roll more and more as we just ra raise the ride height. But, that means it's... I mean, it already wasn't bottoming out, which is this meter here. But, this can support more stuff in the back of the car. You can load it up with more without it hitting bottom. There tends to be a peak, and then it starts to drop because it starts to lose um, practicality. Because it starts to be too high to load up. And can I drop the quality here? Yes! Yes! If we can get this to 400... Oh, oh, it's starting to go down. Okay. All right. So our top speed is 93. <laughs> you want to run it around the test track? We can even, if you're a Top Gear fan, that we've got this airfield test track we can drive around. Again, this will be simulated. We can, however, export this car into BeamNG and drive it around there. And maybe we'll have to. We can go ahead and, and have it. I, I don't know what its time is going to be, like 17th minute? So cheap, only 9% of the population afford it. <laughs> it's like maximum throttle. Maximum, what's the speed? It just crossed 50, you guys. 55 kilometers an hour. 60 kilometers an hour. <laughs> it's struggling. It can't make it to 100, remember? Needs three gears. Oh man, that's, that sounds like more money. All right, let's see. What happens if we go to the third gear? The desire to be drops a ton. You see that? It's like, no, they, they don't want that. Third gear, overrated. Oh, there we go. We can add, we can do a little bit more overdrive on the gearing here. And they like it because I think it's improving drivability. Because what it means is with this gearing, you can stay in the in yeah, first gear for longer. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. A lot of overdrive, long gearing, lower top speed, engines overpowered. No, it's fine. Um, rear frequency, drivability. Oh, we might be able to tune a little bit more. More whiskey and chocolate. Hold on a sec. If I go... Oh, there we go. All right. Hang on. Just slightly... Stiffer springs. A little bit more damping. There we go. Um, so this will affect, like, the, uh, the balance between comfort and drivability and that sportiness. Um... Oh, look at us. Oh, there you go. We'll pull back a little here. Um, so stiffer springs are make the car drive better. We actually dramatically reduce the roll angle here. 
by stiffening up the springs and the dampers. So what was like, and with loud dampers, what happens is you just keep springing up and down forever and ever and ever. What about the sway bars? I don't think we're gonna need them very stiff. Yeah, see, there we go. We're gonna relax the sway bars over here. And get slightly more competitiveness, 450. The problem is we're in a poor country. So even though we've made this incredibly cheap ass car, still, not that many people can afford it. We got tons of warnings here. Psst, this is fine. This is fine. So yeah, we can take a look at the markets. Uh, passenger fleet, interesting. Some people might use that. The family utility budget is quite good. Regular family utility, not enough. Because they, they, half the people can afford it, but it's not a good enough car. Although some of it might buy it. Family budget over here. Hell, utility budget car. Like, it's not a pickup, but they're like, eh, we can make do. Throw out the rear seats, it's going to be okay. We might add, like, a coupe version. Is there no laws against a car like this? Not in our market, baby. All right. It's great. Um, so, if I export for sharing. If I hit this, I think that's the beam version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Eula, export. Imports for Germany? Yeah, no, that's basically the nation we're in is effectively sort of like an Eastern Bloc country, is the way I like to think about it. In, you know, yeah, 1946. All right, so we could potentially drive it in a car simulator after. Uh, this stream here, so it's the Tropico, this is going to be the Tropico Penultimo. Penultimo. There we are. So what we can do is I, we can easily make a copy of this trim, right? We could have like the Presidente edition. So if we take this bad boy, we go back over here, um, convertible. Eh? Eh? It'll have three gears. Ooh. And we could like bring the quality back up. I don't know if it makes much sense. Like there might not be a market for it, but out of curiosity, if we go ahead and make it a slightly higher quality convertible. The market might change. I feel like the answer is probably no. We'll give you a standard interior. Uh, the safety is there. Hell, we'll give you advanced safety features. Like a seatbelt that works. We'll go for a more normal suspension timing, tuning not quite as high. I mean, there's different stuff, but it's not, I, I don't think it's worth uh, exploring this one. Um, what else could we do? If we uh, clone you, oops. And let's see, use like a pickup. We might be able to make a decent like utility mix. City budget? Oh wait, we already had like a 550 or something. That hasn't really changed. See, hold on. For the city budget, they would like... What is that body? Hang on. Oh, we should make a... That's what we should do. We should make a sedan version. Um, actually, let me edit you. Because we have a, a coupe version. Let's make a sedan version. Of exactly the same car. What body type do you want? Maybe it's a more modern one. It was 450 on the first car? Well, I guess it would be on that screen, wouldn't it? Hold on. Sometimes the numbers do change when you go from screen to screen. Just by changing from the two-door to a four-door version, we've got an extra 100 out of this. Oh, the extra seats, you're right, because one of the things I forgot, the seats change... Shit, they want it with no seats in the back. Okay, well, hang on a sec. The four door, let's leave in the extra seats. And in the coupe, well, let's take the seats out of the back and see what happens. Oh, I forgot it's got the uh, the bench seat in the front too. We 
We get the highest ra rating with one seat. Okay, it loses it there a lot. Told you it was a sports car. A McLaren F1, I know, right? There. It'll be the, the penultimo and the ultimo. That's what we're gonna have. The ultimo is four doors, five seater. The penultimo is a two door, three seater? Hey, let's not think about it. All right, let's put this bad boy into production. Um, so we have a one medium car factory over here. Uh, we need steel presses to be able to make this design. So we're gonna just upgrade our factory to have steel presses. It's gonna cost us 25 million bucks and nine months to do, which is fine. We have two billion in the bank right now. We're loaded, which is good. Um, so then we've got our tooling set up over here. So this is creating all the equipment we need to make the various vehicles. We can automate the process more. If we do, notice the, uh, the tooling cost and possibly time, yeah, goes up. So 50 million versus 200 million to set up the tooling. But if we compare over here, this is cars produced per month and the cost per car. As I increase the automation, we do produce a few more cars. But more importantly, the cost per car goes from 1400 $425 per car to make. Forgot the door handles and the back doors. Ah, that's fine. And then there's the tooling quality itself. The higher this goes, the more cars we can make per month as well as the cheaper we can sell it, but it does increase tooling cost. You know what? I wanna make tons of dirt cheap cars. That's what I'm going for. Max automation, max tooling quality, tons of dirt cheap cars. That's what I want. Now, no, this is not inflation. So this is like, this is legit cheap, legit cheap. Because 1945, $400 would be way too expensive for this car. Now we're gonna see the affordability start to change a little bit more. Um, now on that screen, it said we we're making a certain number. I think this number is different. There's like a bit of an update thing. Um, and we do have two trims that we're doing as well, right? Two versions. The factory can handle, can only do one model at the time, but it can do multiple train trims of the same model, uh, depending on the size. A small factory can do like two or three pretty comfortably. And then every size bigger than that, add about one more that you can do. Now we've got an engineering time. So right now it's gonna take us 40 months to engineer this car, but, and our engineering budget, it's only 8 million. We can spend, we can max out our funding budget. So now a 25 million for the engineering, but only 35 months to develop. Right now we have a mix of balance between work speed versus learning stuff. We could go and increase the pressure to work on the project, maybe 75% versus learning, which again brings down the time to market considerably. Now we're 32 months away. Um, we can tweak the reliability. I think actually tweaking the reliability up is actually a fairly good idea because this will reduce the maintenance required on the car despite all the cheap parts. Um, and then again, here are tooling. The more automated we do here, the longer the engineering time, because it takes longer to figure out the process ahead of time and designing it. But um, highly automated, again, we can make more cars and at fewer work units, where if we have fully manual, it dramatically reduces the engineering time, but we make fewer cars. And I still want a lot of cheap cars. I'm gonna go like 80% over here. And then process, this is mostly about like kind of waste and things like that. So really low, again, will save us some of the engineering time. We'll make fewer cars at once. Um, actually, that's not true. This is, the, that's right. This thing is misworded. Process automated versus manual. Um, automated, or the higher level here means you're not wasting too much equipment material. Um, somewhere in here is the timer for how much material things take. I don't know. Um, and yeah, so this will increase material costs. Sorry, no. This will decrease material costs, but it takes longer to make the cars. So you get fewer cars per cycle. And if we go down here, they brought color on sedans, which doesn't sound right. One should be a coupe, I would have thought. Maybe I sort of screwed up there. And whereas I bring it down, it's a little bit more uh, cost, but it's faster. So I don't know. Um, let's just middle of the road it. Yeah, I don't know why it's labeled sedan. Maybe I've got the wrong trim, or maybe that's just the text for it. Um, let, let's go with something like this. Oh, that's back up to 50 months. Is it because of the automation? You know what? I want to target 40 months. So let's just, as just picking a number. There we go, 39.9. We'll go with something like that. So about 40 months to go and engineer this car. 
We could go faster, but then we wouldn't produce as many cars. And you can see here the breakdown of how long it's going to take for various things. So your total engineering time isn't the total of all these numbers because you can work on multiple things sort of simultaneously. But anything that stands out as a very high, like the safety over here, um, that's increasing the time quite a bit. Now, one of these cars does have the advanced safety package. The Ultimo has the advanced safety package. We could possibly trim it out a bit, but you know what? We'll, we'll leave it in there. Anyway, now we have to work on the uh, the engine. Um, so we've got our um, our six six seven. Oh, they rounded it up there. Oh no, because it's a sixty six 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 point seven cc engine. They're rounding it up over here. Uh, someone is um, um, someone is paranoid in the engineering department, but that's fine. Um, so we're gonna have to sign off on a factory for this. So we've got a second factory for engine production. It's a medium factory. It doesn't need any special parts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I don't know, and our rates won't really matter. It looks like we're gonna be making engines much faster than the cars, but I'll bring up the automation a fair bit here too. Some of the rates will change when you get the next thing. I, I hope at some point some things change to make it a little easier to figure out how to balance these things, but they will um, dynamically change how many shifts are being worked to make things uh, work out. So we'll increase a little automation, get the CNC shop. No, not, not at this point. Um, so that's good. Now we've signed off on the factory. That's good. Now the engineering. So we were at 40 months, right? 39.9 months for the en the vehicle engineering time. So we're gonna wanna match things over here, which should be fairly easy. Cause again, the funding isn't that expensive here. Everything's gonna be rebalanced a fair bit. So we're already under 40 months. Let's bring the reliability of the engine up there we go, and we'll just, can we, maybe we'll leave it here and call that good enough. So engineering times are gonna be roughly the same. We'll sign off here. Later on, there's gonna be all sorts of things with like you actually hire engineers, they have specializations and all kinds of stuff. It's gonna be amazing. That's done. Okay, target screen over here. This is how long it's predicted for us to take to turn a profit with our vehicles. Wouldn't be cheaper to build all the extra buildings early on. Um, no, there's no there's no inflation, so um, there is sort of um, economy going up and down, but there's no real inflation, so building things earlier versus later doesn't really matter too, too much. Um, so yeah, this is the payback time. So profit forecast um, of everything put together based on the current economy. You can tweak these numbers if you expect the economy to get stronger or weaker over time, or vehicle desirability, or the company awareness from marketing. You can mess with these numbers. Right now, it's set to about a five-year payoff. Um, and you can see that happening. So, you know, loss, 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 loss. And then after five years, now we're starting to turn a profit on this based on all the engineering time. We can tweak this by either lowering the initial price or raising it, which will affect competitiveness and doing various things like that. So you can see here, if I make the car cheaper, we become more competitive. I mean, it might be harder to sell it or not. I don't know. Um, let's go ahead and give a slight discount over here um, on both the, the Penultimo and the Ultimo. Uh, but again, this will be tuned over time based on things. Yeah, five years is pretty good. So, um, yeah, all right. So the Penultimo and the Ultimo, various stats, 40 and 40. So the engine and car engineering time is similar, which is really handy, because otherwise you'll have to offset one. It'll do it automatically, but let's say one was 45 months. It would, it would um, not start the engineering on the second component until five months had passed to line them up and then it'll work them both together. So line it up for 40 months. So it'll take a while still to get our car out. Uh, so just over three years, three and a third year, right? So we'll sign off on this project. We'll sign off on the Tropico and the Beast engine. And yeah, this is the start delay to help in align things, which is even at this time. We'll sign off on those. Completely agree. Okay. If we go back over here, so this is our main sort of screen. Um, where we can advance the timeline. That's where time we're at. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll probably get this car to sell and then we'll switch over to some city skylines. Um, so this is our engineering time on the Tropico. And you can expand this to see the two trims, the Penultimo and the Ultimo over here. Uh, we can go ahead and choose to like pause, you know, this particular production if it, you know, hadn't started. Uh, this is the margin that we're selling for. This will automatically adjust 
um, to try to maximize sales. Apparently later in versions of the game you'll have more control over this and whatnot. We can take out loans if we want to take out various loans. Um, and here's R&D. So these are various technologies that are going to be coming out. Uh, going forward. So aluminum uh, parts for the engine, reverse flow exhaust, automatic transmission, longitudinal front wheel drive. We want a front wheel drive car. So in two years, that'll become available. MJ, we built cheap cars to the masses, which belched excess volumes of gases. Production was hasty and skimped on the safety and riders would up preferring to walk. Wound up preferring to walk. Nice. <laughs> um, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, unpause the game at this point. I'll bring the speed up to times five. So here's our expenses per month. So we are spending money every month right now because of the engineering. Um, and then as it gets near the end, it'll start tooling the factory. So our cost per month will shoot up even more than this. And with about maybe a year out, we're going to check on our dealer network and marketing situation. So the economy had taken a dive down. It's about 5% lower than baseline over here. Again, um, yeah, right here. Uh, so the region is shrinking a little bit, unfortunately, which isn't great. Um, average budget over here. Um, what we're going to do is take a look at our marketing. So in Archana, which is where we're based, we currently have a level two dealer network. This level two dealer network has a maximum awareness of 26% and a minimum awareness of 6%. That's why we have 6% across the board is because of that. And in theory, this can also affect the rate at which we sell cars. Although I don't believe this is actually in the game at this time. So we could raise our baseline awareness simply by growing our dealership network. The other thing we can do though, is we can also advertise and advertise certain aspects of the cars. Like our cars are very drivable. So everyone who cares about drivability will get a boost over there. That's how I understand it. So we can say, hey, our cars are also safe. We actually have a seatbelt. Um, also, you don't have your car set to sell in Delua. So even if you buy dealerships there, it won't help. And that's there's that too. If I click on Delua, I can build a dealership network, but we'll just focus on our China over here. Uh, our cars are not sporty, so we won't, won't advertise that. They're not comfortable or prestigious, so we won't advertise that either. I think I will go and build up the dealer network, maybe like level four. So we have a baseline of 12. We can grow up to 52% awareness. Um, and if we just let the game run for a tick here, if we go to our markets and trends, if we look at market awareness, you can see here, we have at least 12% everywhere and actually slightly above that, as it turns out, uh, possibly because of some of the marketing boosts. And so the awareness should grow a little bit over time. And the demographic sizes may have changed. Look at this, the family budget started at, was what, like 400 or something like that? It's already grown to like 800. So the demographics there are growing, which is very nice. Um, so we've got our dealership increased. We've got a little bit of marketing going on. We'll unpause and wait for the release to begin. Do, 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 And there we go. So the car is now going to start selling. Um, so this is the target demographic score. We have to let it go for a month before it actually kicks in. Months of stock. So if this starts to grow, cars aren't really selling as quickly as we are building them. Uh, number of factory shifts we're working. Uh, we can tune, when we set this all up, we can tune a minimum and maximum factory shifts. So we'll try to adjust the shifts based on the markets that are available, last month's sale, and last month's profits. So we'll unpause over here. Oh, baby. Look at this, competitive and still over 400, which is huge. You can click to change what is being displayed here. I mean, everyone can buy it, but this is just what we're tracking over here, which is both city budget. So cars, we're selling thousands of cars every month. We have no stock, no stock whatsoever. Um, presumably this is 2.6, there we go. We have, this is I think sort of our maximum is around 2.6 or 2.7 ships that we've got it set to. We can't run any more than this. Um, our margins are growing as we're becoming more and more successful. If you take a look at our awareness over here, look at this. Utility budget, 20%, uh, the fun budget, 23, family budget, about 23 as well. City budget over here. The word is spreading. The word is spreading. This is amazing. So, you know, we're selling those cars. We can increase our, our margins and sell it for more money. Um, it'd also be nice maybe to produce more cars as well. Not sure if the car is fun. I'm betting it is fun. One of the things, last thing we're gonna cover before we go, at this point, so the car has been selling for nearly a year. Here, we'll have it sell. There, that looks, we're here now, it came out here. We're gonna call it, it's been selling for about a year. Things are going well. New technologies have come out. It is now, think about it. We designed this car in 46. It went for sale in 49. It is now 1950. Let's consider, let's run it a little longer. 
There we go. Let's consider we want a new we want a new ramp, revamp of the car for 51. Just a little bit. So we go to our car projects. We open our project. These are so this is the project. For some reason, the open project here doesn't work, which is is dumb. But you can open the project on either trim. Doesn't matter. We're in the car project again. We can do a facelift. This you can see the competitiveness is starting to dip down a little bit. It's not as cool of a car anymore. So we'll do a facelift. The Mark II, right? So this was 46 technology. Now we're gonna use 1950 technology. Already, if we go and hit these check marks, all of a sudden our competitiveness improves. But in addition to that, so our, our Penultimo uh, Mark II, we can then go and edit these trims. We could also change our engine if we wanted, but let's keep the engine. You know what, it's fine. Um, although actually we can do a facelift of the engine as well. But let's say we just edit the trim over here. Um, and then uh, we actually do have to save it again, or if we make any changes, I guess if we make any changes to the engine. But we've got a few things. We could introduce an automatic gearbox. What if we did that? Not too much of a change. It's less good for utility, a little bit better for the fun. Um, but you can tune that. Some of our technology gets better too. So actually, the quality may have changed. New wheels may be available. They're not here. Better brakes are available. We might want to consider that. We could also, let's, let's say we consider, Okay, I mean, that was fine, but um, um, but what if we also facelift the engine? So we'll make a facelift of this engine. We'll do this. Um, oh, yeah. They're like, oh, this might not be the right way to do it. Instead, clone this. There we go. Now we have a 1950s version of this engine. If we edit this, and we can't change certain basics about it. There's, there's limits to what we can change as a facelift. But we might be able to make it more compression. Look at this. Oh, we could squeeze out an extra horsepower by increasing compression slightly because the tech's a little bit better. Um, we also, we have two barrel carburetors. We don't need them, but they're technically there. Uh, we could switch the exhaust to a reverse flow, you know, maybe a little quieter. So not, not much we can do here, but a little bit. If we were different, different cars and different technology, we different things. We could just make an entirely new engine and use that, right? There's possibilities. There's all kinds of different ways we can resign it. Um, so our engine project over here, we've got you. So now if I go here, um, I should just be able to select existing engine. There we go, this clone, the 1950s version. And delete you and select the 1950s version of this engine, which isn't a substantial difference. We do have to recalculate these guys by going into the project um, and then popping back out. Oh, you went down because it might be more expensive. You went up, you went down, I don't know. But we could do this, and then, yeah, we could just say, yep, use the factory. Let's use the same settings as last time. We're going to sign you off. That's going to be okay. Um, engineering time, only 11 months. So we'll release this bad boy in another year. We've got to do the same sort of steps with the engine here and say, yeah, this factory, we're looking to change you over to um, this new engine. Actually, you're going to make both engines simultaneously, um, which we could change. I don't know. This is fine. Um, you're good. Five months for the redesign of the new engine. All right, that sounds fine to me. We'll sign off on this. Advance. Payoff is going to happen immediately. Look at this. Because there's not the engineering time this time around. So it should start to turn a huge profit. We're going to sign off on the new revised engine and then the new revised car. So you see it'll delay the engine revamp for six months to line it up. We'll agree. Go back over here. I may have done some of this incorrectly, but probably fine. Our, we will still be making the old ones. Oh, I forgot to rename the Ultimo clone. So we're still selling the old ones, although... There we go. Now the new one's coming. And we sell the old ones until the retooling kicks in, at which point it'll stop being able to make the cars. Um, oh, the margin started off way too high, or did it? Holy cow. Huge margins on these cars, although we are saving some loot. I'm not sure that it's doing this correctly. But we are making money, actually. Look at this. Huge. We're not back at $2 billion that we started with, but we did go and extend our, our factory. We did a bunch of things. We are turning a profit. I mean, it hands off, but again, redesign from time to time. And we could invest this into a second factory and have a completely separate model going on. The other thing you can do, by the way, you can invest in technology here. So we're a couple of years ahead of sort of the baseline here, but we could go and push this a little further, and then we gain access to things even sooner. But the big thing to do might be wait for four barrel carbs, solid disc, the monocoques over here, more aluminum engine parts. Mm. 
It's a, a legal margin. Yeah. Um, I think it's not adjusting properly because like we had we had huge stockpiles of the penultimate Mark II. So it feels to me like maybe the margin should drop and stockpile fewer things. But again, the, the, the thing's still much in the work, but we're clearly making huge profits there. We're over 2 billion selling. We're selling a cheap ass car that costs us nothing to make. And even though the competitiveness has now dropped quite a bit, right? We started what, like 400? It's not very competitive because it's effectively a, a, a mid 40s car. It's now mid 50s. The base design for this is over 10 years old. But it's still buying because it's cheap. And actually, what's very likely, I think, market budgets is yeah, these baselines. I think when we started, these budgets here were about 2,200. Now they've gone up. And it's not, it's not again, simulate er, inflation isn't part of this. These are sort of in today dollars, but they're expecting to pay very little because there's not much technology. And then as time goes on, they're expect they're okay to pay more because they're gonna get more. They're like, yeah, it would be great to buy a car for like two dollars, but I want it to have, you know wheels so i guess i'm gonna have to spend a little bit more than that boom so there we go um let's see uh if we are saved we're gonna exit i'll see if i can load the car in beam ng and then we'll switch over to uh, city skylines here um i've done it once before i haven't done it for a while though so beam mg is a car racing game uh launch 70s win all rallies that's one of the things i think in the main campaign they're gonna have is like I mean, the main campaign's a million miles away. We're only in the light campaign here. But I think one of the ideas is gonna be like, can you enter your cars in like rally competitions and win awards that way? And then you can like advertise, you know, this is, oh, this is the penultimo rally edition. Ooh. <laughs> BMNG is a car crashing game, big difference. Okay, I suppose that's true. It is hard as hell to drive when I'm at home with proper controller. Here, I do not even have a controller. Um. So hold on, I've got to update the game capture to this. And then play free roam. Um, the automation test track, sure. At the starting line, yes, but how do we choose the car? Where am I streaming from? Or st uh, streaming from currently Scotland, and I replaced the Wi-Fi controller in this computer, so the wild haggis haven't been a problem today at all. Um, it is loading. It's not very nice. There's there's a way to. I'm wondering if I had to hit it first. Well, we'll let it finish loading the map. I did export it. Control E to choose a car. Okay. Oh, I'm hearing sounds now. Broke up talking about how you feel. Yeah, I think the computer's having a hard time uh, loading. Part of it is the game, on this computer, the game drive and the um, the recording drive is the same. So presumably I just load a vehicle. Hey, okay. give me my menu again. Vehicles. Oh, there we go. Um, do I have to copy it into a folder? Oh, is it there? Bottom left? Oh, down there! Yes! Yes! Okay. Yeah, baby. Replace current. Mm. Yeah, I know I'm blind. Do 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 do. Oh, the uh, I think it's probably the speckle paint or something. Look at this. Look at the height of the the ride here. Oh, there we go. That's the controls. Just the arrow keys. All right. Let me uh, tune the volumes here so we can hear it in all of its glory. True beauty. It's not bad. 42 kilometers an hour, there's our gear change. See how it corners. There's a little bit of under, oh my God. I can't accelerate any more than this. Oh! 
Hold on. I think it's because it didn't change down. There must be a key. Yeah. It, it can't accelerate in second gear. <laughs> it can't accelerate in second gear. Oh, there it barely. Barely. There we go. There we go. We might be on a slight downhill. I think it's helping. Yeah, the gearing on the second gear. I mean, we tuned it for, like, the in-game stuff. But what we probably want to do is if we're not just exploiting the campaign numbers, which may not be balanced the way we want, um, you can save your game, your car, inside of automation. Then just bring it into sandbox mode. And in there, tweak it. Oh, my God! <laughs> the understeer is real! The understeer! I said first gear is pretty good. But, yeah, the second gear is way too long. Here we are in second again. Hang on. Let's... God, no, it... I gotta say, when it does hit those high RPMs, it does sound good. If I, um... Is there an option? How do we get manual... Wow, traction control? What? No traction control. No anti-lock brakes. How do we get a manual transmission? It's probably just an, a game option, right? Shift up and down is X and Z. Oh, press Q, control A, crash it. We get, we get toggle gearbox mode, Q. Q for gearbox mode, thank you. So, using realistic behavior, um, apparently we're in, in reverse. No, now we're in reverse. Oh, N! Oh, we were in neutral! Oh, shit! Look at the one headlight. That's good. All right, first. Why, why is it putting the camera in front? Yeah, the second gear is just... Yeah, we, we have to fix the gearing. There must be a way to change the camera mode as well. Is it C? Ooh! Ooh! There we go! Look at 70! 75! <laughs> second has no low end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going downhill. <laughs> This is the only reason we're speeding up is because we're going downhill. We're going to slam into this wall because there's no way. We got skinny tires. We got bad suspension. Oh, that's not bad. Now watch. We're going to go uphill. Watch us lose speed. <laughs> Look, we're lo I got the pedal pressed down to the floor. We're losing speed. Well, this will help us make the corner. Bavarian bend. So yeah, this is the modeled version of the automation test track that you can use. All right, yeah, let's and not, let's put Beam and G through its paces here. Let me uh, just gear down. Oh, I can't because I'm too fast. Really? I should be able to. It should let me downshift and do engine braking. That's what I would want. Like, let me downshift and do some engine braking. Now, speaking of braking things. High impact, 40 kilometers an hour. Oh, there you go. So, welcome to BMNG, which has soft body deformations. You can go into game options, disable gearing assist. Oh, because, all right. If I change gearing modes, arcade gearbox, realistic gearbox. Well, I am unrealistic. Oh, the car, the car is pulling to the right. faster, it'd be great to flip out. It 
let me gear up to two whenever I want, but the question is... Go downhill again. Oh my god, I can't drive in a straight line. The car does not want to go straight anymore. <laughs> oh my god, we got wheel spin going into reverse, you guys! Anyway, just take a hammer to body trim or crash on the other side to cancel out the damage, yeah. Oh, it's glorious. So yeah, I, I don't have a lot of experience with... Oh, did I just turn off the engine? Oh my god, I can hit this button? Oh, that ticking sound. That, that's the sound of quality, you guys. If it still runs, it's still good, right? So, automation is kind of awesome by itself, and then you combine it with this beam MG, and it's like, epic. Yeah, if we gave it a three, like, well, if we just fix the gearing, two gears is probably enough, given the low top speed. But yeah, if we just fix the gearing, to properly cover the range. The problem is we've overdriven it, and then we've got a lot of space in between things. That'd be all right. Um, I think our cars are married now. aren't even on the ground. <laughs> oh, it's an overdrive gear on a two-speed because that's a great idea. Yeah, man, it's great. Okay. <laughs> oh, 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 that's great stuff. God, that was wonderful. I think your drive shaft fell out. Oh, I lost my drive shaft. Oh, oh, sweet. Excellent. Need a third car to break them apart. Well, there's that too. Uh, so yeah, automation and BMMG if you really want to be able to do some stuff. That's one way to cut production costs. Mm -hmm. Let's load up some. Um, let's load up some city skylines. Although okay, automation is pretty cool. Brown doesn't go faster. Yeah, I know. Red ones go faster. Bum, 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 bum. So we're gonna load this. Have a little sip of water. Hmm. Let me put a cut or stream marker so it's a little easier for me to edit this later on. We gotta change the game capture again. No, not to the Windows lock screen. Why is that even an option? Boom, 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 boom. From one car testing to infinite car jams, yeah! <laughs> 